Welcome to my talk, Enjoy Writing CDK Constructs Using Progen and JSII. My name is Sebastian, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the experiences I made after writing some CDK constructs. Before we start, there is a step-by-step yeah, -step tutorial that I have written in order to yeah, provide you with all the details and the different steps that you need to take in order to accomplish that. Um, so yeah, please, if you're interested, please have a look at the GitHub repository that I provide here. Um, it covers a lot more details than what I can share with you here in this small talk. Okay, uh, as you might know, um, Project comes with a lot of good defaults uh, if you want to write some CDK code. Uh, for example, it um, has a consistent CDK versioning for dependencies and a lot of other things, especially um, the handling of JSII uh, is pretty neat, um, and we will cover that also in a few minutes. If you want to do that and you want to translate your constructs into different languages, you need to take care of some small details that uh, are important when the code is translated into other languages. So for example, here we have some uh, construct that accepts some properties and I have provided two different ways how you can write the, uh, the properties and they translate differently into the other languages. So for example, if you take those struct properties here uh, in Java, they will create a interface and they will create a default implementation and a builder that helps the users of your constructs to yeah, build uh, this data container that contains, I don't know, some feature flags uh, or some other input values. On the other side, if you use this um, behavior properties, that will only contain the interface itself, but not more. And JSII is deciding what is being uh, compiled uh, by looking at the name of the interface. So it, the naming conventions here, if you use an uppercase I, it assumes that this um, interface is a behavior interface. So the user of your construct would need to implement it and provide all the boilerplate code by themselves. On the other side, those struct properties, they just act like a data container, like a struct. Um, so it's much easier than to provide some values in the end in the other languages. So keep that in mind. Um, there are quite a few more restrictions. Um, I encourage you to have a look into the article that I link at the bottom of this slide. Um, yeah, because there you will find a lot more information for that. Then the next part, versioning. That's always important, and especially if you write your own CDK constructs. Um, and Prozen, Prozen provides um, or uses a tool in, in the background that is following the conventional commit standard. So uh, what it means is it will take a look at the git commit, git commit message that you provide. And based on that, it will bump the version for you. So for example, if you include a fix colon and then the message, it will create a patch release of your CDK construct. And similarly, if you write something a feed colon and then the message, it will create a minor release. So for example, if you add a new feature and if you include a breaking change in your git commit message, git commit, git commit message um, it will create a major release. That's yeah, pretty handy and it automates a lot of things. Also, it also creates a change log automatically, so you don't need to write that um, by yourself. Um, however, you need to be aware that this feature exists um, because I didn't really know that before and I didn't read the documentation. Uh, so yeah, I just got, discovered it um, a little bit late, uh, but I really like it because it um, helps me to automate a lot more than, uh, than what, it, what it's already doing. All right, uh, the next point is you probably need to include uh, Lambda functions at some point. And yeah, uh, so you need to put your code somewhere in your repository. Um, so that could either be uh, like into your source folder, uh, you could include um, your TypeScript code if you're writing your Lambda function in TypeScript, or um, it might also make sense in some cases if you write um, the code in a different language, like for example, Python, you don't want to include it in the source folder. Uh, I don't know, because you um, do some XR processing or whatever. Um, technically, it doesn't really matter uh, from the perspective of that you should keep your code together. Like if you have your construct that is using a certain Lambda function code, you also probably want to, to take this close together, um, depending on the size of your construct. That's up to you. Um, there is, however, one point where it might be important, and that is um, if you, for example, also include external dependencies. Um, and there are multiple ways how you can um, how you can then instruct such uh, Lambda functions or the code for it. So one thing is you could use, for example, the Node.js function construct that's coming with the AWS CDK. Uh, in that case, you could say um, 
uh, I have my Node.js function and it's at a certain place. Uh, and this Node.js function construct is taking care of bundling the uh, dependencies for you. Um, so in the end, if a user is using your construct, uh, this, const this Node.js con function construct will make sure uh, to create a Lambda artifact for you if you're using TypeScript or JavaScript um, in, uh, in this Lambda function code. And then that will be used as the Lambda function code in the end. However, I think the big disadvantage here is that <clears throat> this build process only starts when uh, yeah, your CDK construct is used. Um, so for example, if it's used in a certain stack or app, um, and I think uh, this has too many assumptions on the environment of your users, uh, because um, this construct will that only work if either ESBuild or Docker are available on your uh, in the environment of your users of your constructs. Um, what I like to do there is I would I like to pre-build or pre-package my um, my Lambda function artifacts if I'm writing them in, for example, TypeScript or JavaScript. And here you can use something like this, so you can extend the compiled task workflow that Progen is creating. And you could say, I also want to compile the Lambda function code of, um, yeah, of my Lambda function. And you can push it then into the, the slip folder, which is used as uh, the, like the target or dist folder uh, for JSII before it packages your, um, your construct code. And then in the end, you could just say in your construct, um, okay, here's my function and at, at that point, uh, there's the code for it uh, that's being used, and that's it. So then you just pre-build your Lambda function code, and the user doesn't have to do this on their system. But you can do a lot more with this approach. So um, you can also extend, for example, in Progen, you can extend the build task uh, or the, the build process, for example, by um, providing further commands. Um, or you can also adjust the release workflow by adding further jobs. For example, it can send a notification to your Slack channel to say, hey, I've released something. Uh, or you can also cr um, create your own GitHub uh, action workflows. Um, it's basically fully cust customizable what you can do. Of course, you can't customize everything um, in Progen, uh, but you can do a lot of good things in order to adjust it to your own needs. And now the important part about JSII compilation. So in order to uh, to start that, uh, that you can translate your CDK construct into uh, different languages and then push it to other repositories, you need to provide this configuration here. Uh, for example, publish to Maven, publish to NuGet or PyPy. <clears throat> and there you need to provide a few more IDs and properties uh, and namespace or package, and that's it. What um, what JSII needs as the basic configuration, um, and then you only need to provide some repository secrets. <laughs> that's as you can see quite a huge list. However, um, it's I think it's pretty obvious what you need to do here. So you need to provide a token or API key or user username and password. Um, however, there's one thing that's maybe not so obvious. That's this uh, staging profile ID for Maven, and you can figure this out if you log in to the Nexus repository manager on, on the Maven repository. And then you need to read this um, ID from the URL. And that's what you need to provide in your um, repository secret. And that's then picked up by JSII. Um, yeah. And if you've done all of that, the release process kicks in. And as you can see, so it's actually quite fast. So Maven is usually the, the slowest <laughs> process uh, because it just takes some more time to uh, yeah, compile and bundle everything in Java. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, within three, uh, within five or six minutes, uh, you have published your CDK constructs to multiple repositories, and that's really cool. It works just out of the box. And then there's another small cool feature that I really like. It's that um, if you provide some example code in your readme file, um, this will also get translated into other languages. So for example, here's this function example. This will get translated into, into this Python code automatically. So um, JSII is picking that up. If you provide this code uh, using the, this, this code command in, in Markdown, and then you annotate it using as the TypeScript language, and then JSII will pick this up and yeah, compile it for you. That's pretty cool. And based on that, you can write a lot of good CDK constructs. Um, here are some further links that you might want to have a look at, uh, also the ones that I mentioned before in, in the, uh, on the other slides. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something now from my experience. If you have some further questions or, or just want to connect with me, uh, 
uh, add me on LinkedIn and ask some questions or tell me what cool things you have built. Thanks for listening. Bye.